Brandis, after nearly 200 days, Chicago finally has a confirmed full-time inspector general. Deborah Witzberg served as deputy inspector general for public safety, and she was confirmed unanimously to the post that was previously held by Joe Ferguson. It comes at a crucial time for the city, with the Chicago Police Department struggling to keep pace with federally mandated reforms and a steady stream of corruption, investigations, indictments, and convictions rocking council in recent years. And joining us now is Chicago Inspector General Deborah Witzberg. Deborah Witzberg, welcome back to Chicago tonight. Congratulations to you on finally being confirmed. Uh, we've reported on the scope of work that this office has done. What are your immediate uh, priorities now that you've taken over full time? Thanks, Paris. I, you know, really to continue on with the good work that the office has been doing. Um, there's, there's a great deal to do um, and there's a lot of good work underway. In, in, in various uh, departments, one of those, and, and this is an area you know very well, public safety, the consent decree process, it's going to go on for years. CPD has said it's in compliance with 70% of the mandates, but the, the monitor has complained that it's not happening fast enough. What does CPD need to do to be more in compliance? Police reform and, and police oversight will continue to be among this office's highest priorities, both, both police accountability and violence reduction are at the top of the list of Chicagoans' priorities, certainly. I think we really need to direct our thinking toward a world in which we do not think about police reform and violence reduction as alternatives to each other, but rather as kind of necessary components. We, we need to reform the police department, not instead of fighting violent crime, but, that, but so that we can more effectively keep people safe. And, and one of the components of this uh, reform process uh, that your office has been critical of uh, is a foot pursuit policy. The mayor came out with an initial foot pursuit policy after the deaths of Adam Toledo and Anthony Alvarez. It was roundly criticized. What does the CPD's foot pursuit policy need to look like? That isn't something we've looked at specifically, and so I, I don't want to comment on that on that here, but I am um, cognizant of the fact that that is one of the policy changes about which people are really concerned. We're anxious to hear from Chicagoans about their experiences and their concerns, um, as well as from department members. And uh, your office in the past has also been adamant about the need for a database of police complaints. That's something that uh, city council members uh, came to a, an agreement on last year, but that has been bottled up. So a public database of police misconduct. Uh, talk about the need for that. That's a transparency initiative that is driven by the notion that Chicagoans, taxpayers, are entitled to know what the disciplinary landscape looks like uh, with respect to the, the members of the police department serving in their communities. And so we, OIG has done a great deal of transparency work around lots of components of the operation of city government, including but not limited to um, police complaints and police investigations will continue will continue with that work. And do you believe it's the role of the office not only to come up with these kinds of recommendations, but then to perhaps use leverage to pass ordinances like this or to convince uh, city council members to at least consider them? I think there are lots of opportunities for us to work with other components of city government to maximize the impact of OIG's work. And whenever and wherever we can take advantage of those opportunities to cooperate without sacrificing the independence of the office, we will do that. I want to move to the other big area here that your office is focused on, public corruption. Just last week we saw uh, 45th Ward Alderman Jim Gardner's hand-picked ward superintendent arrested for attempting to sell a machine gun on city time. Your office in the, in the past has argued that Alder people should not be hiring these award superintendents. They could be uh, patronage jobs. Uh, is this an example of, of why your office has, has advocated that this should not be a position hired by an alder person? I don't want to comment um, on a specific investigation or a specific employee, but I will say that um, you know we have made both programmatic recommendations, as you say, with respect to how the people in, in certain positions are hired. Um, I also take very seriously the responsibility of the office to hold those who abuse the public trust to account. And, and speaking of, of those that have abused the public trust, we mentioned the steady stream in recent years. We reported that Alderman Gardner himself is under federal investigation. It follows older people like Daley Thompson, Carrie Austin, Ed Burke, Danny Solis, uh, and onward. Uh, what is the crux of why this kind of public corruption remains a stubborn problem with city council? This is a problem of institutional culture. We talk about this with respect to the police department, and I think there's a similar conversation to be had in, in Chicago government at large. We, we you know, are in a city where our government operates at a legitimacy deficit. 
and acts of public corruption by by public officials contribute to that deficit of trust and legitimacy. And, and very recently, uh, Alderwoman Michelle Smith has proposed beefing up ethics fines from $5,000 to $20,000 for city council members that violate the ethics ordinance. Uh, is this uh, something that your office supports? Um, you know, w without getting into the, the specific proposed legislation, I will say that the, the, the corruption is a nail that needs a lot of hammers. And so we look forward to working with, with the Chairwoman Smith's committee. Uh, speaking of uh, a lot of hammers, uh, Mayor Lightfoot has said uh, after Joe Ferguson left that she wants someone that will, quote, stay in their lane. Uh, what do you interpret that to mean? I, I won't speak for the mayor, but I, I will say that I will do everything in my power to ensure that OIG occupies every corner of its legal mandate, which is a broad one. Um, I didn't back down from difficult questions or problems as deputy IG for public safety, and I won't do so as inspector general. And, and we mentioned the former inspector general, Joe Ferguson, stepped down uh, nearly 200 days uh, before your confirmation here last week. How did this lengthy absence impact the work of the uh, inspector general's office? And we should mention you, you were the deputy inspector general. You left so you could seek this post. post. But uh, has, has it impacted the work at all to have such a long period of time without a full-time confirmed inspector general? This office is staffed by incredibly smart and competent and committed people, and they have continued with their admirable work. It is the case that this office is not built to be without permanent term protected leadership for, for this long. And so I that, that's a process that needs to happen faster, should have gotten started sooner. Um, and I think the municipal code, the law that governs the selection process probably bears some adjustment to ensure that um, we don't find ourselves in a similar situation in the future. You're saying that you you might advocate advocate for for some kind of change to the municipal code to make sure it doesn't happen. I think that's worth looking at for sure. The, is it impacting anything that you have to do right off the bat? Uh, the fact that that it lasted this long. I'm very glad to be coming to this, having spent, you know, six years at OIG. I think that positions me well to stay out of the way where things are going well and to to move quickly to address challenges where they exist. And so. Um, you know, the work of this office will, will continue to be powerful and impactful. We would all have been better off if this process had, had gone faster. All right. Uh, Deborah Witzberg, uh, best of luck to you in this position, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.